Hi there. If you like having flowers in your home, but you like them small and petite because you don't want them to outshine your own beauty, you're gonna love today's episode. Welcome to another episode of Laugh, Cry, DIY, the show where I try to craft my way into spring, but out of anxiety. We made it through a winter, we made it through a terrible year of quarantine, and now we have new life and new growth and new haircuts. Now one of my favorite parts of spring and really any time of year is fresh flowers. And we're seeing fresh blooms everywhere. I'm talking Trader Joe's, I'm talking Costco, I'm talking Graves. Now there are plenty of beautiful bouquets you can get at the store, but if you're like me, the best things in life are free and stolen. And if you just open your eyes, there are plenty of beautiful blooms all around you. In my neighborhood, there is beautiful lavender growing all over the neighborhood. And I love to clip a little bit and keep a beautiful little bud vase, but even those can be super pricey. So today we're gonna make a tiny little bud vase that is super cute and super cheap. It's even gonna be neutral decor. <sighs> it is so hard for me to say that because I have been at war with the neutral, colorless, all white decor community, but I think in these times it's important to come together and just let go of our differences because you guys, we are stronger together. So to make some fun, cute little bud bases, I went on down to the dollar store and I found this little miniature pirate chest to keep your secrets in and these little glass vial jars to keep curses and spells in. So we're gonna turn this into a little bud base holder. Just watch, okay? Step one, I'm just gonna take the hardware off of this little cutie pie. Guys, this hardware is so cute. If you guys know any little um, fairy steampunks, tell them to grant me a wish and I'll give them these little hardware parts. So here's the idea. We have these little guys and they're cute on their own, but I wanted to make a little sort of stand that they would go on, almost like test tube beakers, but actually they wouldn't be going on it. They're gonna be going through it. Therefore, we need to drill two holes in the top of this little box so that they can slot right in. So first thing I'm gonna do is just take the little jar screw tops, put them on there, and use that as my stencil for where I want to draw the holes. Oh Jesus, we already hit our freaking moment of hell because my pencil was not really well sharpened and so now it's too big. Step one, already a nightmare. Let's try doing that again. It's better, honestly, probably about the same size, but whatever, we'll just make sure our hole is less than that. Okay, now to bore these holes, to bore these holes, I think I'm gonna use this 5 8 spade bit drill. I think, psych, we're gonna do the 3 quarter inch and see what happens from there. Beautiful and clean. All right, I'm just gonna switch to my regular drill bit. You know, whatever. This first step has not gone according to plan. I should not even use these or be allowed to use these in the future. I think I have a better option. We're gonna take a simple razor blade and because this is such soft wood, we're just gonna whittle it down little by little like we're on the prairie. Whittle in, whittle in my days away. Mother. This is less whittling and more just hacking. Remember when I built an entire cane cabinet and like sawed out the middle. But this dollar store demon, it's making me look like a freaking idiot. Switched blades, let's see if that works. We got one. Kitty, move. No, you know the whole point of this is just that it's gonna look handcrafted. 
best sound in the world. Oh yeah. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is actually use wood filler around the interior of this and I'm gonna really quickly like pop this through so that the wood filler goes into the right spots. Maybe that will fill in and make this a prettier circle. All right, so when it comes to wood filler, you gotta work real quick. And shoving that in there, just working this in. I'm gonna add another layer. That made it a lot better, or at least significantly cuter. So that dried great. It's a lot cleaner. I don't know if you can see. I'm also gonna try to make it like as smooth as possible. And to do that, I'm gonna use a vintage nail file that your mom used to use in the 90s. These are not made for human nails. They will destroy anything that's not acrylic. Do you remember that jingle? Oh, I sucked up the hardware for fairies. Oops, doing a little, little cleanup. Cool, okay now, I made a promise to a community that we would be doing a neutral art piece today. Um, so what I'm gonna do is since this is untreated wood, um, I'm gonna make a little stain and stain it just a little bit of a darker shade, maybe like close to a walnut. That's a wood that I'm not totally sure what color that is, but we'll find out. So the internet says you can make your own stain if you didn't go to the store to buy some, um, just mixing acrylic paint and water. So I'm honestly just gonna dip in some there and just mix. Ooh, that one might be a little bit too light, so let's do just a tad darker. I'm just gonna dip a little paper towel in that and dab that on and we'll see what that's looking like. Uh, yeah, too light. And let's toss more of that in there. Okay, basically you're making Nesquik. I'm gonna go even darker. I know it looks lighter on camera, but you can definitely see the difference. Just working that in and it still brings out the natural wood grain, which is great. I'm gonna do a little, little second coat. So that looks pretty good. We're just gonna set that one to dry. While that little guy dries, we are going to take our beautiful little test tubes, I'm gonna call them, um, and you could totally leave them clean and fine. That would be cool. But some people might see the little rim at the top and just think like, ew. So we're just gonna take a little twine and kind of wrap the top and give it that little boho feel. Ooh, glamorous hot gun. If you wanted to up I'm just gonna put a little bit to start it. I'll put like a little glue here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty much easy to wrap. Use the hot glue sparingly because you know it likes to spill over because it's a drama queen. Cool. And I'm aware that if you wanted to wash this base, the twine might get wet. And you know what, that's okay. I can live with that. If you can't, don't do this. Okay, now when you're working with twine, it can get a little bit frayed, like it has a lot of split ends because, you know, it doesn't condition. So a really fun trick for this and any material that you're working with that is like, has a lot of flyaways basically, pompous grass or whatever, is literally, I mean, take it and just Vidal Sassoon, Vidal Sassoon, Vidal Sassoon, Vidal Sassoon, Vidal Sassoon, Vidal Sassoon hairspray it, get those little flyaways down and you're good to go. Final step, we're gonna go on a spring walk, try to find some flowers. All right, this is one of my favorite places to get lavender and it technically is on the city property side, so I don't feel bad. Alrighty, you guys, we got it. So I think it is finally time for your big reveal. Once again, we did it. We took a dollar store one and made her a 6.5. Again, if you're gonna try this at home, please don't do it the way I did it. But if you like danger and dollar store DIYs, definitely like and subscribe because that's pretty much all we do here, whatever.